Okay, so I think it was earlier also either Jamie or someone I forgot who asked, but about this week, given that last week some people haven't done the data engineering. Um, so again, I, I think it's this, the four projects that you'll be highlighting must be done really well. And this week, we are also gonna be doing some kind of, um, it's called, I think the um, test gorilla. So you will be starting, start taking some kind of uh, one hour tests directly from, you know, just, it will be like, uh, I think they take your screenshots while you are taking it. And a number of people um, last year or in the last batch, we have seen that some companies still prefer that you take some very time pressed um, kind of tests. And those tests usually most people failed because we haven't prepared them in terms of coding uh, and SQL in a way that because those things what they are requesting you is just that you may be very good at doing data engineering machine learning but even for machine learning they want to then test mostly just your python kind of coding um, standard and and you know those standard quiz quizzes and standard kind of way of for example sort quickly you know okay write a sort algorithm or do this or do that you haven't been practicing or you haven't been um it wasn't the, the priority. It was much more of, you know, our focus and our strings mostly is in a general, generally equipping you with the mindset, how to approach a problem and how to address it. And especially the ones that is time pressed, not in a form of hour pressed, but kind of days that to deliver um, even when it's like a lot of work and stress. So those are you're already well prepared and to be able to present that and to talk and to grasp an idea. But for this kind of tests that are just really purely focused on your coding skills and, and some others, I think they, they, they are in principle, of course, they are cor correlated. I mean, if you are good doing this, you should be doing good also doing that. But it is not true. Anyone who's optimized for that might still beat on, on that game, right? So it's always optimization. So an algorithm that's really, or a person that's really trained for that will actually outperform um, compared to someone who's really intelligent, who's probably more likely to do better at job, but you know, if the company prefers that one. So the very first one that I create is just on a very simple, just a simple JavaScript. You're, um, you're basically, uh, it's called a, like basic JavaScript and then some kind of, um, some ESA, uh, basically a few few lines of ESA and a few lines uh, and then some kind of aptitude kind of test where it's much more about your, I think 16 type of um, metric that they measure on that. So it will be a 54 minutes. And as you would know that I'm gonna share. Um, so, so it's on this one and I think it's on the tutorials. I have submitted it and you will basically, I will be able to see who took it and who doesn't take. So you don't need submission, but when you submit that I will be able to see from, from, from this end. And so this is the, basically the test that I have. So, um, what is it called? So my assessments, for example, so it's called 10 academy skill tests and there are basically, um, already some people have taken, that's good. Uh, maybe not, they just registered, haven't taken, but it's this uh, 16 types, JavaScript basic entry level and communication and attention to detail. Those would be the, the ones that, and then I have two custom questions. That is, uh, what would you describe your working style? Like you have to write a few, a five minutes essay on that. And then what skills would you bring to this job? In this case, consider to a job of tutoring. Um, um, but it's, this is much more of a test. So you can actually just to your dream job. If it is a machine learning 
it would be, you know, think of, uh, you can write actually a lot more as a job that is exactly in your area. It could be um, Web3, it could be machine learning engineering or data engineering. Just write, it could be for a Google job, you know. Um, think one, if you really can't think, think Facebook or uh, a team in Facebook, a team in Google, okay? Just that, that simplifies it. So that would be the one addition that I have, and that is on the, so where you will be doing it, given it's in part of in the tutorial that's scheduled, and it's for tomorrow. Um, so today, I basically, I, I went through, so that means there is no need for, for here. If there is a question only, it, there will not be a video session, but only a Slack, I will just be available. It will basically be like, you basically go there, sign up for the test, and then tomorrow you will do the test, okay? So it's basically just that. Um, so this one is again, uh, let me underline it. So this one is the link, again, it's the same link. So that is what is addition, but I will add, so we will then register a few more, like basically we will pay for it, and then you will be able to practice um, the coming weeks a little bit more so that you are you stand a chance because we don't want you to to be you know to fail on that um when you could get a good job just because you haven't you haven't optimized for that so this one we can also beat it in the future we probably will bring it a little bit earlier but this time at least we will, we will know that i mean last time we didn't even know so this time it's just that you should be able to see you know the kind of get used to the testing and what requires i'm sure you will then beat the system uh, immediately uh, with a few practice okay with that um so again to those people who have done last week something else what i would say is that don't continue doing something else continue doing either the previous week or this week and this week you really can start and do it exactly from the start so that means you basically are as, as it it is as if you have done while you are doing this week you are basically assuming that you have done a code before so that means you write it and then you will um you will write the change and the automation it's basically writing a full pipeline to be able to convert imagine that you are you created from last week you take the data put it in a database uh, by hand i don't care uh, at the moment and, but in principle, of course, what you want is that, especially the redash dashboard or something you have to create one, at least um, one script that does that or one SQL. And it's about, if you have, you basically have to write two. One is the, um, one is for example, for um, like you have to write for redash and for superset basically. It's like to take that that SQL and then to convert it. It's the same if you have done SQL last time Postgres, this time you do MySQL or any other thing. You know, you can choose to do any other database, but imagine Postgres and MySQL. If you have done last time all your code was with MySQL, you don't just go and change your code because that is not feasible. You know, you can do it for one for your code, but imagine you are you have already you have been using the system for three years and you have been writing so many mysql kind of anything it could, it could be mysql python connector mysql just itself a script so i want you to just write one mysql at least script and then you want to be able to convert automatically how do you migrate that so into uh, postgres so it, it is about designing that should it be you know can you briefly like one for one script at least right an easy migration it could be a text analysis right like okay take this one but if this is if you're using python connector it gets easier because all you need to change probably is the address and then um basically the you know which database as well as also the type of uh, engine that you're using but still it needs if you if you think of multiple codes you know, how did you structure the code? So maybe you can create one, refactor your code in such a way that you have now one connectors separately 
versus the basically just the code itself, which is slightly dependent or anything that you want. So you have to design. The whole point is that, you, you know, in this case, it's very simple, it's ad hoc, but what we are requiring that you design how to migrate, like if you have already existing code and data in one database and you want to go into another database or work, you know, basically a data warehouse to another data warehouse um, from Google Cloud to, for example, to go to Amazon Cloud, you need to write some scripts, assuming that you have enough data and enough codes that you cannot just go one by you know, one by one to change them. So that's the case. If you haven't done last time, and if you want to skip this one, I would really recommend everyone to do this one because change automation is really not only in data engineering, it, it comes everywhere, but you can, you can also choose, like if you haven't done it last week, you can choose to do, to pick one of your projects um, or a few of your projects and update them. Because next week, if you have heard or if you haven't heard, I don't know, but you will be, the whole week is that you will be presenting, you will choose four projects, four of your projects you want to highlight, two in the area you want to find a job and one from the other areas that, that are kind of, because you know sometimes you might not get exactly what you want or that you might be hired as one and you might operate as another. So what I want you is that you would choose one from each, but two from the stream that you would like. And then you basically summarize it for a 10 minutes, kind of going through why that project, why, you know, why it's important, what you did. And basically means in each of them, um, somewhere around two and a half minutes, or you can of course stress on the two projects, three, three minutes, and then the other two, two, two minutes. It's basically about really convincing that you are able to communicate your work. And that is basically our way of like saying, okay, great, you know, we have, we have seen, and you can explain it, or if there is anything missing, we will then be able to take down and we help you on that, okay? Is that clear or is there any question so far? Rafa. Hi, Paul. Um, I just want to make sure that I understood what you said now. Yeah. Um, so everyone will choose like two projects from the 12 projects we did um, in the track that we want to pursue. And then there will be like one or two projects from the other tracks. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and that so will be done this week or next week? No, next week. That is for next week. It's like you will prepare, basically you go through, you, you know, so you do everything to clear them, like whatever, to understand them, you know, or to basically be able to explain to them because people would ask you, okay, explain to me this, explain to me that. How did you do that project? So they will ask you that. So next week is basically uh, Friday will be a graduation, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and so before Friday, we, by Thursday, we have to finish basically everyone presenting for 10 minutes their work. Okay, just the, like these four projects, what they have done, basically summarize them nicely and make us kind of like, that means you are prepared, that you have looked into the your past work, you have cleaned them based on your current understanding, because right, right now you probably, the week one project you have done, probably you really could do a lot more, just even just, and if you haven't written read me, for example, write it or read me, you have you know do something and and that would complete it at least you know it means it doesn't mean the, just after that nothing work you will improve after that but you will know you register what needs to be improved which projects you want to again do it redo it um, and all that so basically next week is the summary like you know a total summary of what you've what you've done but you would focus then what is ready so far and then you would choose uh, what you have you understood more, which ones are you proud of, which ones you want to highlight. So you, you take four projects, two for the, from the careers that you are going to be looking for a job and two, one from the other each. So it's basically four in, in total. Is that clear? Yes. And if it's possible that I want to ask another question, uh, because yeah. I joined that unfortunately. Some reason. So for the test gorilla, I just I saw that uh, I saw that you were showing something. If you just like, uh, is it something that 
want to be like so i think so if you when you click the presentation like the the link oh it's the documentation would, okay yes so it's like so in the um, tutorials so i think the tutorials are so in the in the tutorials that there is this link when you click it you it it, it allows you to register for the test okay yeah and then after that it, it recommends you that you do it in one go it's for 54 minutes so today it's for you to register so this afternoon is for you to register and to learn a little bit of whatever you want to learn about um, gorilla test maybe even review you know which companies do they use and stuff like that you know if you go you know test gorilla whatever you would just see it's uh, quietly used so that's why we just and then they have a number of you know uh, whatever so it's just for you to explore a little bit about this gorilla this today so there isn't much work um but tomorrow you are prepared to take a test okay. it's a 54 minutes test thank you okay great any question so far or is everything clear if it's clear just let me know a few people just saying it's clear on the text chat at least okay great we have some okay so let's continue and Today's project is basically a continuation from last time. And I think you might appreciate exactly that the only constant thing in life is change itself. And of course, I think it's a dramatic statement when you are finished changing, you are basically finished. I think that's really a dramatic way of saying that constantly there are so much technology change, there are um, ideas change, there are competitions, there are scales that you haven't thought before there are needs that that emerge and a lot so that means in a company that really actually the most it takes is that decision you know to move to migrate or to continue right but it's still the change this is a change itself so but when you even continue when you want to say continue with the same tech stack it means now that decision means yeah you are now investing a lot on that and probably building for scale, stability, and others. So still, that's kind of change. Um, but then you really, at some point, might really haven't foreseen a new technology that, that just comes and changes the game, and you have to change, okay? Maybe cost, for example, you have been running in AWS. Suddenly you realized, oh, uh, right now, for example, the whole topic is multi-cloud. That means you really are optimizing and getting the best out of every cloud and then a number of tools are there to help you just do multi-cloud. And in that case, you know, the company always just want to save cost. And then in that case, you really are migrating something. So this is, this again, this challenge comes from industry. Actually, it is at home or some other um, online home, just like Airbnb, home renting uh, or holiday renting place. They had this challenge, so they wanted to do exactly this kind of change. Uh, but written a lot of their stuff was written on dbt and a lot of their dashboard was written again with redash and then they wanted to change to superset and that's exactly the, the kind of the challenge comes again you know the business need is very similar it's now that you have been like with that company that you established last week and then now um this is yeah, so this is um, another investor comes and says like, okay, they can invest in you more or they will just give you a second round if you change now for something scalable. And we model that one to mean, let's say you change from one database to another, but in the future it could be to Snowflake or to something that is much more um, scalable or distributed. In this case, both Postgres and, um, and MySQL, of course, are not distributed, so you will be limited but it's just to simplify it because we are not giving you a uh, cloud. But if you had, of course, we would have asked you to actually do, I don't know, Apache uh, Druid or some other distributed computing uh, open source ones we would have asked. Um, 
but the outcomes are similar. It's about really data, you know, kind of working on data warehouse. And I think it's simplified. Um, you will have two GitHub links to uh, reports per, per this week, one in Chem, one final. And you also, of course, like if you are, if you haven't done last week, the kind of work on the past project, you can skip this project and work on any of your past projects uh, that you would like to clean up and I don't know, ensure either one or multiple of them. But you have to, again, there will be a submission link for uh, your project um, statement. So that means you have to really say which ones your plan, basically, which ones you are going to work and what do you want to deliver by the end of it as an entry as well as also as a uh, final. And with that, the instruction is that uh, building data warehouse tech stack still is exactly the same as last week. It's just that it's now moving, migrating from an existing one, from an existing uh, data warehouse to a new data warehouse. It involves the same technologies. It is again, you know, Postgres or MySQL, Airflow and ELT. DBT for transformation and a reporting environment in, instead of Apache, um, uh, uh, like, so instead of Redash, you are now using Superset, another uh, dashboard tool. Again, if you want to find or suggest another one, you can. I think these two are common, but there are many other comments as well, you know, but these ones are the most because they are open source and you basically will be able to write SQL just only to be able to do some dashboards. That's the most important part of them. Um, and of course, as before, you are just working on dockerized environments. So, and the very fundamental task is this one. Okay, I'm just gonna make it actually bold. So in task one, change your local tech stack to new frameworks, migrate your, again, when we say migrate, it's not like, of course you can just copy the, day, the MySQL and just do it, but what I want you is that to write, imagine this was so many tables. I want you to be, basically write some kind of automated tools that would read maybe tables, or if there were other codes, scripts that wrote those tables to take those, those codes and then, you know, uh, facilitate the migration to a new database. Like if it was MySQL to Postgres, there are probably some some slight change in the MySQL or in the connection or in some things. So that's what you do. You would migrate your database, uh, not just write it again new, but you really copy and, and, and put it. So it's basically that. I hope this is clear. Migrate then from Redash to Apache Superset. Again, when you build Redash, we assume you have done script, not just by you know uh, the GUI, the graphical user interface, but actually you have wrote a script, uh, SQL script to basically fetch that and display it. And that's why we use Redash and Superset in this case, because they are, you are able to, you know, the whole point of, uh, by now you should understand the whole point of DBT was, it allows you to version your transformation. You, it allows you to, to do so many things, the documentation and stuff. And a tool that allows you to do that is really great, right? So Redash and Superset, you can really document your your um, dashboard itself. If you now use, for example, Power BI or uh, Tableau, and then you are unable to do that because you are creating it mostly by hand and that is not documentable or that's not versionable. Of course, you can version the work, the workbook, but if you want to really change slightly, you know, it doesn't work. So in this case, you can really version and stuff like that. You can see history, you know, a, a lot of them. That's why we use so this is the, the two. And then of course, the other part is just writing, compare existing and new vendors by functionality, interface and develop a migration strategy. So compare SQL syntax and automated solutions to change queries in DBT. Is there new functionality that you would like to leverage? For example, if you were using MySQL and Postgres, you know, um, are there new functionality in Postgres if you, if you had in MySQL that you would have, you would take advantage in Postgres, so that means get advanced in, in whichever one. So for example, can you write some um, definitions, like write some kind of functions uh, in such a way that you can automate some things 
is there and then also think about testing strategies so for example great you have migrated how do you know the two are equivalent and you need to be able to write at the end of by the end of the migration you must get the same thing the test must work in both cases right so that's really really i would say the set point is another uh, really in real life that basically means money okay so it's really important okay and then the reporting environment so some sometimes you probably have created apis out of that and how do how are you going to migrate do, do you have to you know think of the logic and and then also if you had given permissions to users and settings how are that changing can you write a script that automates that you know so it's basically you know this project even if it's really not written well um as as we want to but it really is asking you to be to be a kind of advanced to go to an advanced level okay it's even if in in your case you should be whether you know in both mysql and postgres as well as also the dbt and also the um, you know the reduction superset you should look into permissions and stuff how do you change that when you are changing from one to another so it, it really and of course what cannot change programmatically you also have to identify what what couldn't you programmatically change from those settings and so you have to write and what needs to be done manually and that one how do you create it in such a way that this is distributed that means that you now have created the things that needs to be done manually so that you can give it to people to other people to to be able basically to, to do it manually so you have to identify those okay and then um so these ones again you have to comment on your reporting and in your blog is that how do you announce for timelines because one thing is just you are doing it but imagine this is in production in production really any downtime is really an issue because a lot of people probably depend on it and therefore think about and comment and read about announcements for timelines so that means you really have to plan your work in such a way that uh, this time i will experiment on a staging or in, in a dev environment but when i am about to migrate i will announce that so how many times are you going to announce you know uh, what are the kind of code freezes that for developers that you have to say okay you know it's now time it's tested and then also just downtime sometimes it's inevitable you must bring the whole system down um, and so you must announce that and think about also training you will need to provide so for example people have been using the old system now they are, the new system has come so what kind of training do you need based on the change that you've introduced right uh, is the dashboard looks and functionalities has they changed has the workflows has changed you know what kind of training are you planning okay so that is the the the, the kind of the project there will be two tutorials uh, one is on wednesday on apache superset and then and thursday system migration uh, that is by advanced sql and system migration from aws to google or azure cloud that's by former uh, batch four uh, training jakinda and i think there is also on friday so that means yeah like the, there is another one by stephanie again from kenya or, uh, jakinda is also from kenya who is also working both of them are working as a data engineer and she will be talking on friday about data migration and day-to-day -day, uh, of data engineer so that she will uh, talk you know give us some kind of tutorial as well as experience exchange okay so is everything clear is any do, does anyone have any question um I mean, we will, I will see, I will have to talk to Arun in terms of how much budget do we have, Daisy? Um, if so, I will be able to launch the instance tomorrow morning. So it's just a budget constraint mostly uh, on those ones. So I just have to consult with the finance team. Any... So do you mean like, so for which instance is that, is that a new instance or are you thinking old instance? Daisy, you can unmute. Yeah. 
I think it's, do you hear me? Hello? Yes, yes, we can hear you. I'm not sure if Daisy can. Uh, 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 it's super quiet. Okay. Yeah, Rafa? Yeah, just to comment on what Daisy said. I think she left, but um, because when, uh, when that message came, it was before you mentioned that we can do it in Azure Cloud, I guess. So, and I, uh, as it's my question as well, is it if it's possible to have it for the other, yeah. Uh, yeah other so I, I, I want to ask if we can provide the same instance as before. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, that people can work on the cloud. So I will let you know, most likely it's yes, and it will be up tomorrow. And that allows you to, if even others who are work who has been working on on the cloud, you are able to just do it again and on that one. So, but today you will basically, I, I think today, as unfortunately, I, I won't be able to do it. But tomorrow morning, most likely. But I will, I will have to update you on that. Okay. Any question? Is everything clear? Super clear. Everybody has got everything they need to start the challenge, Stella? Okay, so in this challenge, the week's challenge, is it that we're going to do it afresh or we can just proceed with the same repo? Um, uh, yeah. The repo, the repo should be new, just so that, you know, I mean, so that we will be able, I think it's, it's a good question. I think it's simpler if you can do it, if you can just say, you know, change from whatever was named superset before if it had a redash. Uh, it's simpler from the sake of, for the sake of also commit history analysis and stuff. But, um, yeah, so what is, So how do pe people prefer? I mean, I, I think it's, it's a very, for me, undecisive question. Normally I was just thinking every week you have one or a, for every challenge, but this one is connected. So in principle, if you do it also, it is not a problem. But when we then analyze your, your gates, has anyone benefited from their data analysis? Let me ask that question. Has anyone? benefited looking at their analysis that we provide um, in, the, in the TNX system? Or how do you feel? Uh, let me hear one or two, if anyone has looked at it. William, just can you just tell us a little bit so that I can have an understanding. What did you find this week? Hello? Yes, Hi. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you. So, mostly my coding and in general, uh, uh, Tinas was poor at the beginning, and uh, Anesthesia in the other feedback was quite helpful in uh, helping me uh, create something more. Uh, so, that you got. Yeah. Anyone on the automated GitHub analysis that you have in the system now? I think since, I don't know, week eight or whatever, we have added some kind of the number of lines, you know, your percentage, how much was this and that. Did it help? Did you use it? Did you see it? Uh, Stella. Okay, for me, um, it just made me more aware of how I'm coding, and when I'm doing the projects afresh, I try to um, like include more um, 
descriptions of my code to make it more understandable. Okay, so you prefer it new? Or do you want to work on the same? I mean, in some way, you could just basically copy the same thing, delete the dot git, add everything, and then start from like git in it, and then create, you know, so you should just be able to do. I just want it to be removed, the dot git folder to be removed so that you would be able to, you know, you, you start from a fresh git history. So that's where I, I, I wanted, just in case if you could, I think let's do it as, as always, just start on a new folder, just like always. But you can copy all the codes from the previous week just to this one and add it, okay? It's easier in that way. And for testify, you know, we have calculated it because these are standard metrics that, you know, to infer, for example, code effort, we look at the complexity, it's called uh, MIAT indexes. So that basically means in your code, we look at how many variables are there um, and how many operators. And then the, like the more complex the operator versus variables are there, then the more time it would take to actually write um, those lines. And, and basically just that, you know, I think if you look at the references, those are the indexes that comes and effort are quantified based on how difficult it is or how complex it is to, to write that code. And then there are others, it's called the cyclometric complexity. This is much more of another type, which is like branching. It counts how many branches your code has. So for example, you know, uh, if you have if condition in one, it's basically one. But then there are many types of branching your code has, like some, some way like it can go this way, it can go that way. So it, it, it analyzed your code in terms of logical uh, units and then how, how they are connected and it builds a graph. And then from that graph, you can count basically the cyclometric complexity means if you have more branches, whatever, more connections from one place to another, it's a tree that, that it's counted. So that, and then of course the rest are calculated just uh, from here and there, but basically by analyzing your, your code. And we then take what is good, for example, if you are a number of lines of code or the kind of the effort or the, the thing, the number of function, whatever, whatever is recommended. And then we give you, it's not top by top, for example, the number of lines of code, it really shows just, it doesn't mean a lot of number of lines means good, right? One can be so amazing, you know, so efficient and write the, the same code that it took 100 lines for another person, that person may have taken two lines. That doesn't mean top in that sense. It's just only says top in that index, in that metric. It's basically that someone like within each of you, then we compare how that is comparing, right? And then we give you just that percentile. So it's a percentile of like, if it's a number of line of code, we sort it from zero, you know, to N. And then we say like your line of code, your number of line of code for that file, you know, how does it compare with the other? It's in the top or the whatever, but top not in the sense of like good, but it's just percentile. Is that clear? So I didn't understand your second line and I didn't like the last update on assignments review. Why would I need to see the GitHub files and so on? I mean, it is basically, again, this is the analysis that we would, we, we, we see. We see your code line by line, file by file. And that's basically for us, but then just because we are seeing that and how in your commit histories, as well as what you have added every time and how they are structured, that's the part. So if you now click that one, you know, just the icon of it, usually there is more information. If you just click only the, the file, then it, it takes you to the Git 
but the icon actually if you click on the left always the icon it, it gives you breakdown analysis for that code so it is how it's just basically we wanted to show you exactly what we see so that it may be useful or it may not be useful but at least you you see what we see so hopefully that makes it clear yes i think attendances and all of them are incorporated absolutely they you know i'm we are not gonna recommend someone who's not attending as much it's like basically i mean in, in a way it's it's building you know you have to forget about skill sometimes skill really in its own doesn't exist it exists with people and with communities and it's about confidence on a person whether you are you're getting going to get hired in google or not unless you are establishing your own company if you are joining another person's company and someone who is very very not that competitive can really get a top job because they might just generate more value if they become so good at managing this and that even if their programming is not as much good you know it's it's just a known thing it's like these days especially soft skills are the most required i think people will not hire just talented but not you know good at soft skills so in a way again our judgment in ten academy we say our god is basically job being able to help you get job not not your skill per se we don't really do anything with it with your skill or with your intelligence per se what should what is considered so we want to measure things that actually an employer wants and we want to give them that so just make sure that it's not personal it's really that okay is that everything clear then and for us if we place you in a good job we are successful and you know uh, to just again dramatically saying it if you are if you haven't learned anything and you have zero idea about anything and we manage to place you we still consider successful of course you know that's a dramatic version of the extreme point of it of course that won't happen in any way but what i mean is that we are not in the skill game business it's not a university thing it's about learning what really takes you to take uh, to put you into a global job and that you are successful there because of course if you just if we just place you and you are not successful there it's basically our brand it's our brand is basically gonna go down and we will not be able to continue so of course we have a stake in it but it's really the point is it is not about making you the you know inter like whatever uh, the most skilled person in this or that uh, we're not believing that we teach you anything other than we basically believe that you're talented and we are bringing out that talent to be saleable in the global market and we give you everything we know and from technical and technical perspective to allow you to become to compete with anyone whether they are in the us in germany in china in india that you compete and win so just making it super clear okay great i think it seems everybody is clear so we can stop here thank you and uh, ten academy team we can stop the recording ten academy team is there anyone Nastasia, are you able uh, not connected at the moment, but uh, let me just join with the Ten Academy team. Maybe okay. have a reason out there. Okay. Do you want me to, to stop the recording? Yes, we can close now. All right. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Bye.